The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another container. And this is where all of our little thumbnails for our videos are going to go. Now again, I want to be able to rely on the uh, width of my parent for this. Parent.par parent par width. And again, I've kind of I've done a little bit of homework already, and I know that I need this thing to be 274 tall. So let's go ahead and leave that just like that for the time being. Now Again, we're going to like stick a bunch of extra containers inside of this thing. So let's take a moment to think ahead, right? So because I want that to show up the correct way, I'm going to go ahead and set these to align left to right. And at this point, I'm just kind of working off of what I know is going to come next. So I'm going to align them left to right. I don't want any more, or excuse me, I don't want any more in this max per line. I don't want more than two of these per line, right? If we look at this one that I've already finished, Right, I've got two. We can also see that I've got a gutter in between these things. Right, and so the align margin is the parameter for that gutter space. I've got two per line. So we've kind of set ourselves up here for a little bit of success ahead of time. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this. I'm going to call it Container Video Bin. I like to use descriptive names in my operators' names because it helps when I come back to these things to figure out what on earth it was that I was up to in the first place. Now we're going to use a handy uh, method here with a, with a replicator component. And so let's go ahead and put our repl replicator here inside of our network. And to make a replicator work, we actually uh, need a few other pieces. Now I'm going to use a folder dat to drive a bunch of this. And I'm going to attach that to a null. Right? As you remember in our workshop, I almost always end things with a null. Uh, and I don't think that's a bad practice to get in kind of generally. Now, a folder dat is going to let us look right at a folder on our computer. Now, uh, like we learned, one of the ways, well, what we want to use in this case is that uh, set of nature photos, or those nature videos. and we remember that if we look at our uh, movie file in, and we navigate it to one of those nature videos, uh, that we can see a kind of pathway to that, right? So this is a path to where that exists, but that's actually evaluated as Python, right? There's this app samples folder map nature. So let's just go ahead and borrow that. I'm going to copy paste that. I'm going to come over here in that root folder. I'm going to paste all that in. And what I need to do to make sure this Python expression works correctly is I just need to close my quotation mark on the end of this, just to make sure that's going to be that's going to evaluate the right way. Now I don't happen to need this movie file in anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Poof, gone. Great. And what happens with a replicator is a replicator is going to make copies of whatever our master operator is. That could be any number of things. And it's going to make copies of that thing for every row that's in a template table. So for every row in this table, we're going to get a copy of whatever we create. So let's take a look at what that means exactly a little bit. So let's add a container component. Now I'm going to go ahead and call this container master 1. I'm going to add a digit because we'll see in a moment that our digit is going to be important to us. I'm going to drag this onto our replicator. I'm going to set this to be the master operator. I'm going to drag this null onto our operator. Now I can drag it right here into this field, or I can drag drop it right onto the component itself and select template dat table. You know, the, the kind of technique that you use here is up to you. When I'm first, you know, I'm uh, talking with students that are first starting out, I often recommend that they go to the operator and they drag it right to uh, the target parameter they want this to land on. As you become more familiar with the environment, you can kind of work faster uh, by kind of dragging things around this way. So we'll see that when it hadn't spit out uh, five copies real fast right away, uh, before we even knew it, those were made. Uh, and that's wonderful. That's really slick. Um, 
you know, what we really want, right? Like we want things to be perfect in so many ways is we kind of want to treat this master as something that we can kind of continue to make changes and update to. And that all of these pieces over here on the right are going to update as we go along. So in order for that to work the right way, we're going to use a technique called cloning. So like we saw before in class, when we make something a clone, all of the replicants or anything that's targeted as a clone for that particular operator uh, is going to copy over all of the same uh, kind of inside pieces of it, right? And that's, that's really powerful. It makes it really fast for us to build really exciting things. And it gives us some uh, kind of slick ways uh, to build and distribute what, what it is that we're doing quickly and efficiently. Now, it means that we need to think a little bit differently. We'd have to think of uh, our master as a kind of a stamp, right? That there's only kind of defined things that change as we go along. Uh, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. That's a kind of great thing for us to hold on in our minds, hold on to in our minds. Um, and, you know, it just means we've got to be a little bit more careful with what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and make this uh, master component. We're going to make it a clone of itself. And again, one of you asked, well, why on earth are you going to make this thing a clone of itself? And the reason that we do that is that when we re-replicate these ops, what that will do is it will make sure that uh, these replicants inherit that property. So it doesn't change this operator at all. It just means that all of our replicants are going to get that parameter. So we'll see that when we replicate all, now all of these things, are uh, they inherit that clone parameter. That's what we really want. That's what we're after here. Um, if we didn't want to do that, we could do that in the callbacks. I happen to think this is a pretty slick way to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, just leave it that way for right now. Now, we're also going to change a few things, change a few other things. Now, an important thing to know about the way clones work is that clones only get their interior contents. Or rather, their interior contents are the things that update uh, automatically. So, in order to make this kind of work the way that we really want it to, right, we need to kind of set up a few pieces here on top and then reclone this one more time or re replicate this one more time. Now, as you might have guessed, we're going to use a null final as our final top. So we can go ahead and set that up here right from the get-go. Um, like we talked about earlier, I know that we're going to make these 160 wide, and we're going to make them 90 tall. Oops, I need to make sure I'm on the right one. Heavens to Murgatroyd. 160 wide, 90 tall. I think I set up that other parameter here the wrong way as well. Yep, dot slash null final. Uh, and that should be just about the things uh, that I want to worry about. So let's go ahead and go back to our replicator. Let's replicate all. Slick. All right, we're 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 looking pretty good here so far. Now, let's go ahead and dive right in to our master. We're going to use a movie file in top right here. We're going to, as you might have expected, attach it to a null that we're going to call null final. And now we should see a bunch of bananas show up. Whew, great. And again, remember, that's because everything we do here inside of our, uh, our master component is going to get cloned over to all of these things, right? Because they're all looking at this, um, this component to be their clone master. So if I looked in here, right, I'm going to go ahead and split my view one more time. You don't have to do this, uh, but I'm going to split it top bottom. Up here on the top, I'm going to look at my master clone. And here on the bottom, I'm going to look at one of my clones. Now, I happen to know it's a clone because clone shows up right over here. Now, we'll see that as I move things around, anything I do here to this master happens to my clone as well. So this means that we can kind of treat this master component as a template for what we want all of our clones to do. It's a really powerful technique. Now, for my movie, right, I'm going to use a little bit of Python to kind of sort this out in a, a much faster way for us. And uh, we're going to write an expression here, and the expression that we're going to write is going to target, right, it's going to actually evaluate something over here. So let's use an eval dot 
I like to use eval dats to kind of help me understand what's going on in Python expressions a lot. And let's write our first reference here to look at a table right here uh, in this eval. So in, in the expression parameter, I'm first going to start by describing the operator that I want to target. And so I want to look at the operator, right? So op stands for operator. The operator with the name null1. Now I can also, you know, and this works in this particular circumstance because we're in the same part of the network. If I'm referencing something from another dimension of the network, another depth, right, what I need to include is a more complete address. We'll see that in just one second. So for right now, we can see that I'm looking at the operator called null1. Now, if I put in brackets here, in the brackets, I can use these to describe the row and column for a table that I want to look at. So let's say, for example, that I want to look at this cell right here, 0, 0. I can put in 0, comma, 0, and I get name. Now if I put in 0, comma, 1, I would get path. So this is the, the address right inside of the table that I want to look at. Now I don't just have to use uh, kind of index values here to indicate where I want to look. I can also uh, use the string names of the headers. So let's say that I want to look in the row called name, and I want to look in, or excuse me, I want to look in the column. Oh dear, oh bother, here we go. Uh, getting all confused. I want to look in the row one, the first row, this one right here, row one, and I want to look in the column that's called name. Okay, if I do that, what I'll end up with is this movie one MP4. Whew. Okay. So I could also look in the row, right? If I looked in the row called name, and I looked in the first column, I'll get path, right? Because this first uh, column, right? So this can be uh, a reference point in terms of how we're thinking about uh, our headers. And this first row up here, right, can also be uh, a reference point as we think about headers. I tend to use columns, um, right? I tend to think of these uh, this first row as being my header, uh, but you can work in any way that you like. So what I'm going to want to do, right, what I really want to be after is I want to use this path to describe which file should show up in each one of my containers. So, you know, that's, that's cool. How do we do that, right? Because I really want something like 1, 1, right, over here, 1, 1, and then I want... 1, 2, oh, excuse me, I want 2, 1, right? I want to go on down the next row, and then I want to go down the next row, 3, and down the next row, etc. Now, I happen to know I want this thing called path, so I don't need to use the index. I can use its name, path, instead. That's like a little bit more human legible for me to understand. And I could also use my digits, right? So my digits, the digits of any operator, refer to this number, right? So if I change this number, we'll see that update in the digits. This is really handy. It's a really powerful way for us to work with replicants, especially, we'll see. So that's a bunch of kind of abstract things like, you know, what on earth does that even mean? How are we going to use that? That seems so confusing. Well, let's take a look. So here from my movie file in, I want to look in, I want to look at the operator that lives in the network location dot, 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 slash, up one. It's called null one. It's a table, so I know I can address it this way. And let's just put in uh, what we know is going to work, right? We know that we could look at the first row and the first column. Okay, that's that works. Okay. 
We know the column is called path, so we could replace that. Okay, that's slick. But what I really am after, what I really want more than anything, is I want each one of these to be different according to the row here. So how do we get that? I can rely on the fact that each one of these has a unique set of digits. So here, instead of one, right, I don't want my digits. I want my parent. I want my parents' digits. So now we've gone through, and for every one of these, we're looking at a different row inside this table. Now, why on earth do we have two of this first one? Well, we have two of this first one here, so it makes sense that we have two of the first one here. What we need to do in our, uh, our master is we need to turn the display flag off. Now, if at any point we re-replicate, we re the display flag gets turned off for all the replicants. <sighs> what, you know, how do we fix that? Well, we're going to use our callbacks. So what happens in our callbacks is every time one of these things are made, uh, we run this little script here. And so we can go ahead and uncomment, right? In Python, this little hashtag is called a comment. And it, uh, it prevents this piece of the code from executing. We can uncomment this c.parameter display, right? We've already learned that we can access parameters this way. And it's going to go through and it's going to turn on the display parameter uh, even if this master's display parameter is not turned on. All right. So there I just re-replicated everything, and that made sure that the display parameter for all of these was turned on. OK. So now we've gone through, and we've started out by making our little movie bin with all our videos playing. Now there's a few things that we're probably going to want to do to optimize this, uh, and a few other slick things that we probably want. Um, so let's just like take a moment and think about what other features we might want to add to this. I would really love it if not all of these things were playing, right? Like I don't need all of these things uh, kind of like decoding video all the time. So let's head into our master and let's go ahead and turn the play parameter off. Whew, great, that's slick. I like that. Now I would like that play parameter to turn on though when I mouse over one of these. That, that would be mighty nice. Well, what we can use is we can use a panel chop. Right, and our panel chop here, if we open up this little puppy, our panel chop shows us lots of information for when we're hovering over the top of our panel. And in this case, the thing that's most interesting to me is I have this thing called rollover. And rollover fires any time I'm over the top of this thing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I can use, I can actually write rollover in right here. Or if I don't want to do that, I can use this drop down menu. And I can find rollover here in this drop down should be somewhere in here. Great. Right, so this thing fires every time I roll over this. Let's go ahead and attach that to a null. And let's grab this, and we're going to drag it over here, and we're going to export that to the play parameter on our video. Now remember, all of these are clones, so we can see that when we roll over this thing, Right, that toggles this play bit on or off, which is pretty pretty slick. Now we should see that it does this for all of our videos, which again, that's pretty slick. That's a pretty uh, nice way for us to get a little bit of interactivity in here right out the gate. Now I would also like this to have a slightly different color, right? Like let's add a constant top. And I'm going to add a composite top. And I'm going to take these two, plug them in together, and composite them. And 
Uh, I'm going to go to my transform page. Now we've looked at this a little bit, and the way we need to change around this composite is the fixed layer, the one that def uh, actually defines the dimensions here. I'm going to set that to be input 1, because I'd like it to be the first input here. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, prefit overlay as fill. That's great. Now in my composite method, right, I'm in this multiply method, that's all right. Um, we could also do something, we could do any number of these. It's going to be hard to see what on earth that's doing. So let's go ahead and switch this to under. So that means that this bottom layer shows up on top. Okay, well, you know, that's not exactly what we want. So let's crank down the alpha on this a little bit. Let's, like, turn it down to maybe, like, not point one five. And we can scooch this null over a little bit. We're going to add a switch top. I'm going to plug in my movie file in and my composite. And now what this will let us do is it will let us move back and forth the two different ops that we have here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. I'm going to connect that in place of my null. And we'll see, you know, similarly, when we turn this on and off, right, all of these flip-flop. All right, let's go ahead and grab this rollover parameter. Let's drag it over here to our switch. And now let's export this chop here as well. So now what we have is when we roll over this, we get a nice little indicator that we're inside of this particular video. And we see it running, right? So you could, you know, if you so chose, you could actually make this different color, right? So you could have like a little green highlight. Maybe you want that to be a little bit more pronounced. Maybe you don't want it to be this under effect necessarily. Maybe you want it to be more like an overlay. And we could swap the order operation here so that's a little bit more kind of pronounced. Right? That's that's pretty all right. I like that so far. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to just turn this color down a little bit. And I'm going to switch us back to being under, because I like this other effect a little tiny bit more. Right. And we'll make sure this is all, oops, correct. There we go. So I happen to like this. You can set this up to be however you'd like it to look. So now I've got this thing that plays my video when I mouse over it, so I can actually kind of see, uh, you know, what's going on in the video. And I actually, at the same time, uh, get a little visual indicator uh, so I know which one I'm mousing over. Okay. So let's, let's stay there for just one moment. Um, we're going to leave behind this portion. We're going to come back uh, when we need to fix something else. But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and just kind of let that one be for a moment.